56ers! I bet you have no idea where I am to intro today. Today, we are playing for cleaning supplies. Yes, for our game, you may be able to win a hand sanitizer refill. Just let me know if you win out of all the points that you add up at home. Hand sanding, hand sanding, and not just any hand sanding, Perel. Yeah, it's the good stuff. All right, let's hit the game. Get ready to play. All right, 56ers, don't forget what we're playing for. We are playing for Purell, hand sanding, refill, what you've always, always wanted. Today we're playing Nailed It or Failed It Cat Edition 2.0. You have to guess whether or not these cats nailed it or failed it. Get those points you win, starting with the first video. Boom. Huh. Does this cat nail it or fail it? Let me know what you put in your answer for the Purell. Oh, nail it or fail it, nail it or fail it. Does he hit on? Can he do it? Can he make it? No. Nailed it. Next question. Two. Oh, that thing leaped from all the way over there. That's insane. I hope he nails it. I hope he nails it. What's he got? Boom. Nails it. That's impressive. That's an impressive cat. I will take the cat. Next question. Cat nail it or fail it? For the Purell. What do you guess? What do you guess? Here we go. Does the cat get over? Another nailed it. Everyone's nailing it today. Next one. Nail it or fail it? In the boxes. What happened? What do you got? Put it down. For the Purell. Boom. There's a leaping cat. There's some impressive cats today. Last question. For the, all the marbles, two cats. Does this cat make it? He's trying to impress the other one. Boom, boom, boom. Jumping in the box. Get in there. Oh man, failed it. Got destroyed. Thank you for playing the other to fill with cat edition. If you got the most points correct out of everyone you're playing for, you will be going home with this lovely prize, a Purell refill hand sanitizer. Just write Barry Orem at CrossroadsChurch.ca. Yes, Barry Orem at CrossroadsChurch.ca, and he will mail you your Purell hand sanitizer. P.S. That's my boss's email address. All right, have a great day. Hey, grades four to six. Here with me today, I have a, a, a giant stuffed Curious George. Now, I have no idea why we have this at the church, but we do. And, and as I was looking at, at George here, it reminded me about all those books we used to read. You know, George is always being curious and getting into trouble. And we sort of get this idea that being curious is a bad thing. I don't know how many of you were curious as little kids and always getting yourselves into trouble. Pastor Jordan had a bit of a reputation growing up as being mm, a little bit mischievous and a little too curious. His mom always tells this story about when he stuck a nail into his little brother's ear just to see what would happen. <gasps> you know, that, the kind of bad kind of curious. But there's also a good kind of being curious. And this month, we've been looking at the story of Zacchaeus, thinking about how Jesus interacts with us in a personal way through the life of Zacchaeus. And, you know, as I looked at Giant George, it got me thinking, curiosity isn't always a bad thing. In fact, when we want to think about one another and getting to know our stories, being curious about other people's lives and what's really going on in their hearts, it's actually really important. It's actually a gift that we can offer to people. So today, we're gonna, we're gonna hear a little teach, and after, we're gonna wrap up and do a little bit more thinking about how we can be curious in one another's lives. Just think about this. How many people in our schools, in our neighborhoods, on our teams, or even in this room right now do we assume we know? We might feel confident that we know the stories of some people just because we know some things about them, like their name, or what they're good at, or what they're into when it comes to clothes, music, or friends. We think we know the full picture of who a person is because of what we can see, the way they act, the way they live, who their friends are, and more. That tells us all we need to know, right? Well, 
Not exactly. See, we can know a lot about a person, but not really know them. Just like in the superhero movies, there's a really good chance that there's more to the stories of the people around us than we see or know. Because here's what I know is true. Everybody has a backstory. In each and every person we think we know, there's more to their story than what we can see. And if we really wanna know someone, we have to understand where they come from. We have to see more than just what's on the outside. We have to understand the people, experiences, beliefs, and, and more that make them who they are. Now I think you probably know what I mean because you have a backstory. You know that in your own life, there's more to the story and you want the people around you to recognize that too. Maybe you got angry and yelled at a sibling this week. You found yourself thinking, She'd understand if she knew about the friend drama going on right now. Or maybe you turned an assignment in late and thought, my teacher would be more understanding if she knew that the power got shut off at our house this week. Maybe you stopped texting a friend back and thought, they have no idea how depressed I am. If they did, they'd know why I'm not responding. That stuff going on that you wish other people would consider, that's your backstory. It's where you're coming from right now. And if you're like me, you wish people would try to understand a little more of it from time to time. But I think the question for all of us is this. Do we give the same kind of grace to other people? I know I sometimes don't. The reality is we rarely consider the backstories of other people. We don't often stop to consider where they're coming from. And because of that, we don't ever really personally know them. So how do you and I begin to see the backstory? How do we make an effort to understand where people are coming from? How do we make it personal? Thankfully, Jesus gives us a great example to follow. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at a cool story from Jesus's life. A couple of thousand years ago, he was traveling in ancient Israel and came across a town that was home to a well-known bad guy. I know we talked about superheroes earlier, but this guy was more of a super villain in his community. His name was Zacchaeus, and he was a tax collector, which basically meant he cheated his neighbors out of money just so that he could keep his wealth and power. Even though his reputation was rough, when he heard Jesus was in town, Zacchaeus went out and made an effort to see him. He wanted to catch a glimpse of Jesus so much that he climbed a tree just to see if he could spot him in the crowd of people. What was crazy is that out of the entire crowd, Jesus noticed Zacchaeus up in that tree. And not only that, Jesus walked over, called Zacchaeus by name and told him to get out of that tree. Why? Well, for a reason no one expected, to hang out. Yes, that's right, Jesus wanted to hang out with Zacchaeus, to spend time with him, to get to know him. And not just anywhere, Jesus wanted to go to Zacchaeus' home, the place he came from. Take a look. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. I realize Jesus inviting himself over to Zacchaeus' house may seem a little strange to us, but it would have been absolutely wild in this culture 2,000 years ago. Zacchaeus was not a good dude, and everyone knew that. I mean, Jesus knew it too. But Jesus wasn't satisfied with only knowing about Zacchaeus. He wanted to actually know Zacchaeus. That's why Jesus wanted to go right to where he lived. See, there's something about where we live that says a lot about who we are. Where we live is usually the place where we're most comfortable. It's a place where our guard comes down and we can be who we really are. Can you imagine Jesus coming over to Zacchaeus' house and Zacchaeus taking his sandals off, putting on his barbecue apron and kicking back with Jesus? Hey, what's up Jesus? What you want, some pork or some beef? Some sauce with that? I don't know. Now, I'm not sure that's exactly how it went down, but one thing is clear. Jesus wanted to make it personal. Sure, he already knew everything about Zacchaeus, but he still decided to take a step into his world to get to know him. Jesus made it personal with Zacchaeus when he took a step to understand where Zacchaeus lived. Visiting Zacchaeus' home meant that Jesus would get to know him in a very personal way. Jesus would get a glimpse into an important part of Zacchaeus' backstory. Of course, Jesus already knew his backstory because he is Jesus. But that visit showed Zacchaeus that he was accepted 
story and all. See, where we live isn't just a physical address. It's a place that gives others a glimpse into our personal situations, our day-to-day -day lives, where we live is a part of our backstory. It's the part most people don't typically get to see. And what's cool is that what Jesus did for Zacchaeus was an example of something that Jesus does for you and for me too. While he may have walked into just one man's house that day, it gives us a small glimpse into the way God stepped into all of our lives when he chose to send his son, Jesus, to earth. The God who created the universe stepped into our world to understand where we come from, to show us how much he cares, to understand our stories in a real and personal way. It's personal because Jesus understands your story. He knows our stories because he knows where we live and what it's like to walk in our shoes. He doesn't just see and understand a little bit about us. He knows us because he knows our whole story and he loves us no matter what. If the way we treat other people is going to be personal, then we have to choose to understand their stories, just like Jesus does for us. So. Where do we start? Well, before we get to know others, we might need to become known ourselves. For some of us, our first step might be to acknowledge that Jesus wants to know you personally. In fact, he already knows you better than you know yourself. But you might need to invite him into your story. He wants to be a part of your life in a real personal way. You can talk with your group leader or a friend you trust about what it means to follow Jesus and experience life the way that he says is best for you. Then. It might be time to let someone else into your story. Your step might be to share more of your story with someone else. Not just some random person or a stranger, but someone who really cares about you. Someone you trust who is really a big part of your life. A great place to start is with your small group. What if you started to share a little bit more about where you come from? What if you told them a little bit about what your life is really like? What if you opened up to share more of your backstory? It could be the step that helps them know and care about you personally in a way they couldn't before. Maybe you're in a place where you want to make it personal with others, the way Jesus did for you. You can do this by giving someone the gift of going second. In other words, you can be the first one to share. You can choose to share a little bit of your own backstory so that other people know it's safe to share some of theirs with you. When you share a little about what you're living with right now, it can give someone the courage to do the same. And when someone does share their story with you, make sure you choose to listen and ask questions to learn more. When you show someone you care by listening and wanting to know more, you show them just how personal getting to know their story is for you. Just imagine if getting to know the stories of your classmates, teammates, and neighbors was something you took personally. You'd start seeing people for who they really are instead of who you think they are. You'd become known as a person who really cares, a person they can trust, a person who wants to know people in a real and personal way. It's personal because Jesus understands your story. What do you think it would have been like sitting at that table watching Jesus ask Zacchaeus questions about his life? What do you think it would have been like for Zacchaeus to actually get to share about who he really is when his whole life he had kind of probably never felt like he fit, never felt like he had friends, maybe never felt like anyone even cared to ask him about what was really going on? Some of us feel this way. We go to school or maybe we even come to church and we feel like, does anyone even really care what's going on with me? Does anyone really even want to know my story? Grades four to six says we have an opportunity every single day to be people who are curious, to be people who, who know that, that people's stories really matter because they matter to God. How can you take some time this week to be curious, curious about your friends, curious about some kid in your class, be curious maybe about your sibling, ask them, What's hard for them? Ask them what's good. Take some time to be curious, to dig a little deeper, to hear somebody's story. So Julie talked about how we got to be curious about others. Getting in their shoes in order to make it personal for them. And so I got a Lectio this morning that we're going to read to help us be thinking about how we can be curious and paying attention to other people's stories so we make it personal for them. 
that we'd love them like Jesus loves us. All right, here it is. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. The first part of that verse, just so that we talked about it, it says selfish ambition or vain conceit. That means like we shouldn't just be paying attention to our own stories, putting ourselves first, wanting others to be curious about us because we're great. So just so you know, that give you a little marker. Let's read it again. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Now, if you haven't closed your eyes yet and and listened to this scripture, I'd like you to close your eyes now because we're listening so that God might speak to us through these words. Pay attention to what stands out to you. What's a word or phrase? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. I wonder what phrase stood out to you today. Maybe think about it, write it down, share it with your family, whoever you're with, and then talk about what, what's one way that you can get in other people's shoes this week? How can you practice creativity? Maybe talk about those two things. All right, hope you have a great week. Goodbye from my bedroom. Don't forget, it's personal because Jesus understands our story.